Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Geoscience Australia Wednesday seminar, this time being delivered wholly as a webinar. Uh, I hope you're having as gorgeous a day wherever you're joining us from as we are here in Canberra, a uh, brilliant sunny autumn day. I want to start by uh, acknowledging uh, that, well, Geoscience Australia uh, indeed acknowledges the traditional owners uh, and custodians of country throughout Australia here, the Ngunnawal and Ngambri people, and we acknowledge their continuing connection to the land, waters and communities uh, on which they live. Um, we pay our respects to people, cultures and elders past and present. I'm really looking forward to today's seminar. It's entitled The Future of Location-Based Decision-Making with the Digital Atlas of Australia. And our presenter today is Lisa Bush, who's the head of the National Land Information Branch here at uh, Geoscience Australia. Um, as we know it, the landscape of Australia's uh, spatial sector has evolved enormously in, in recent years and through advancements in technology, we now have access to truly vast amounts of data and it's quicker to obtain, easier to collect and generally speaking of higher quality than ever before. But the abundance of data also presents its own set of challenges and the diverse nature of data uh, with its varying shapes, sizes and formats and the multiple sources across uh, different jurisdictions, it requires us to address the question of how to effectively integrate this data and derive meaningful insights for decision making. Overcoming these challenges is going to be key in harnessing the full potential of spatial data to enable informed and impactful decisions. Stakeholders across government recognise the immense value of spatial data and we acknowledge that government has a crucial role to play in building a location enabled Australia. We need to work together in partnership with industry and academia to bring spatial information to decision makers and policy makers. At Geoscience Australia, we're committed to fostering collaboration across government, industry and academia to transform this future vision into reality. We're dedicated to driving innovation and excellence in geoscience and spatial information. And we're excited by the journey ahead as we continue to work with our, all of our partners across government, industry and the community to unlock the full potential of Australia's spatial sector. Today's seminar is being led by Lisa Bush. Lisa joined Geoscience Australia in August 2022, following 26 years of service in the Australian Army. During her professional career, Lisa has created, developed and led diverse teams responsible for the design, the delivery and sustainment of multi-million dollar programs of national importance. Now, as the head of the National Location Information Branch here at Geoscience Australia, Lisa is focused on uplifting and modernising our geospatial capabilities, including the Digital Atlas of Australia. So welcome, Lisa. I'm sure we're all itching to hear what you have to say. Thanks, James. Appreciate uh, that introduction. And I'd also like to say thank you uh, to all our um, uh, participants who have dialed in today. We have over 400 people um, who've dialed in today. So thank you for both uh, your time and interest and hoping that we're able to answer uh, some of your questions either through this presentation or if you've got follow up questions, we're in a position to be able to help answer those. Um, as mentioned by James, uh, a relatively recent addition to Geoscience Australia, and I have the privilege and pleasure of being able to work uh, with a cross-functional team of really smart Australian public service and contractors as we look to collaboratively work together uh, to bring digital arts of Australia uh, to life. Today's presentation I'll talk about in three main areas. Uh, the first I'll, I'll have a little chat about our spatial landscape. I'll then have a talk about digital art Atlas Australia as an overview, and then I'll have a quick look at where we're at uh, right now. Uh, so moving like uh, right along, I'd like to reiterate the words uh, of James, and uh, I would too like to acknowledge that we're meeting the lands of Ngambri and Ngunnawal people, and also uh, to acknowledge um, uh, those people of where you're dialing in today, noting that we have people dialing in from country all across uh, Australia. I'd like to also respectfully acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands, waterways and skies where we live, work and learn and pay my respects to elders past, present and uh, emerging. 
In addition, I'd also like to say as the day after Anzac Day and as many people return uh, from an Anzac Day long weekend, I'd also like to acknowledge and honour those who serve or have served before us and express my gratitude to the families of serving personnel and veterans and collectively thank you uh, for your service. So in terms of Digital Atlas Australia, there are a number of challenges uh, for Australia uh, and these are in the most instances place and time related. Indeed, the geographer and many of us note that everything happens somewhere in both time and place. Capturing and capitalising on like the location of anything and hopefully everything in both time and space is the crux of what makes place or spatial information or location enabled information or whatever your preferred terminology is. It's what makes it so incredibly powerful. It has the ability to connect multiple different types of, of information together and fuse it into one meaningful picture for you. The places where we live, work and learn are ever evolving. And after events, uh, and this has um, certainly been highlighted in recent events over the last couple of years, in particular, calling out Black Summer of 1920, COVID, and an incredible amount of flooding in various parts of Australia in, uh, in the last two years as well. And what it's really done is resu resulted in the demand for up-to-date, meaningful location-based data being um, a, an even bigger requirement than it's ever been before. Um, but the landscape itself is just a little bit more nuanced than that. And that's, I guess, what I really wanted to talk about as we lead into Digital Atlas Australia. Many of you will have heard the expression as swimming in sensors and drowning in data, and we absolutely are. There is more data, data out there than we could possibly poke a stick out. A lot of it's dark data. We don't even know what, uh, there's a whole heap of data that we can't even uh, see or use. Um, there is too much information out there unless we're capitalising on a whole range of technologies to cue us to the really important pieces. The data that we do have, instead of sitting in that idealised lakes, is often sitting in swamps and standalone silos. And those swamps are pretty murky and we're not really sure what's going to pop up uh, in there. And certainly we're not necessarily going to be able to find the data that we're looking for. Whilst everything happens somewhere and in both time and space, a lot of the data that's captured is not spatially enabled. And in fact, a lot of it at best is sitting in Excel spreadsheets and quite often it's sitting in Word documents or flattened PDFs and it's not being spatially enabled and yet it has a spatial component that just hasn't been realised yet. In terms of the data value extraction, if you think about the knowledge pyramid where in past we've been happy with inf uh, data and then information, what we're really aiming is to move up that knowledge uh, data value extraction triangle and what we're really looking for is best bang for buck, making sure that we are able to make um, that the information that we have is enabling actionable insights so that the, the top two components of what we know as uh, the knowledge triangle. In terms of uh, trusted, particularly relevant at federal government right now, but uh, stakeholders, wherever you're coming from, are after trusted data sources. That doesn't necessarily mean that they need to be authoritative, although there is certainly a preference for authoritative data sets, but to understand the data quality and where it's come from uh, and to know that it, that it is uh, curated and we have an understanding of the quality, that what we're using is actually trusted. There's a long tail of spatial support and really what we're saying here is the majority of geospatial requests actually take a low amount of effort from our really experienced, highly qualified geospatial users who want to be on the pointy end of things and doing some really good spatial analysis, but they're often uh, tied up in doing a whole series of um, essentially low drag spatial requests to meet the needs of users, uh, whether it's across government, industry or community. However, if we could put in some help help mechanisms, the majority of people could help themselves and we can leave our in high demand uh, spatial professionals to get on with that really high, high end spatial analysis uh, work. So that's the long tail of spatial support. In terms of personalised, uh, then we have users across government, industry and community, and particularly in industry and community, who are really after a personalised interface that matches their knowledge, skills and experience. And whilst we may have a population of close to 27 million, they're looking for an interface that is tailored to them and what they know and what they need. 
in addition, we're after a push button uh, friendly interface. So uh, most people can get around their old, uh, I can't say that, but you know, around your old smartphone um, pretty well and can navigate some uh, uh, applications within that without too much trouble. And we're after a similar type of functionality in the systems that enable their decision making. You don't want a technology overhead. You don't want a training overhead. You want a push button friendly interface that you can teach yourself in a minute or two. And this last piece here, is there an expectation uh, for an omni-channel? The majority of stakeholders don't care where their data comes from. They just care that all the data that they need is there and it's trusted. They don't care if it comes from 15 different parts of Geoscience Australia or across eight different federal and state government departments and a, and a pocket of industry. They just want to know that the data that they need is there and do not care. Um, about the complex web that sits behind it to enable the fusion of all those different uh, pieces of data. And so I guess that's where we come in as um, as Australia's national mapping organisation. Geoscience Australia has an important role in supporting a location based economy or oh, sorry, economic recovery. And through our partnership and national leadership, we aim to provide trusted location data at the national level um, and information, knowledge and capabilities. We are committed to creating a location enabled Australia and we'd like all Australians to have access to location information so that government, industry, researchers and the community can make better informed decisions to improve economic, environmental and social outcomes for Australia. Our vision is to be world leading organisation that informs evidence based decisions through integrated earth scientists, creating a better future for all Australians. And it's this expertise that enable us to open up Australian government data on a whole new level. And that's really uh, where Digital Arts Australia itself comes in. So to address the challenges and, and to meet those expectations that we just talked about, Digital Arts Australia brings together, curates and connects trusted national data sets from across government into an interactive, secure and easy to use online platform. Anyone, anywhere with, an, with a connection will be able to explore, analyse and visualise location based data on geography, people, economy and the environment as it relates to Australia. Exploring data by location will empower governments, businesses and communities to make data driven, evidence based decisions about planning, infrastructure, investment at the local, regional and national level. Whatever scale you choose is relevant for your whatever scale um, uh, meets your needs as as the user and as the decision maker. It will capitalize on innovative tools and features that provide the ability to interact with richer, timely and easily accessible data, information and analytics and support greater customization. Users are able to customize content, combining government data with other publicly available data or indeed their own data, which they may or may not wish to share. And users have the ability to upload uh, their own data to provide a more detailed and integrated map, which they can then uh, choose to share through their interface or with their own, uh, own user groups or indeed not share at all. So if we talk a little bit about Digital Atlas Australia in general uh, now, and really what this slide is depicting is we're aiming to get away from the clearing houses or uh, not get away, but to build on the clearing houses and, uh, and catalogues and federated catalogues that you're seeing on the left hand side of the, of the screen there and moving across to the right. So a federated GIS and morphing into a digital ecosystem where Digital Arts Australia is really that connective tissue that um, enables organisations across borders, jurisdictions and patterns to mesh together and to fuse multiple uh, information, data and service types uh, to better enable our stakeholders across government, uh, community and industry. To do this, then co collaboration is absolutely key and working beyond uh, borders with integrated geospatial infrastructure. Uh, it allows the collection, analysis and visualisation of geospatial data and making sure that we're using the FAIR principles, as you can see depicted on that slide, making sure it's findable, accessible, interoperable and the most uh, incredibly important reusable. Many of us um, try to exemplify the old adage of collect once and use many, but often we don't even know what's been collected out there or what's been produced or how to access it. And Digital Arts Australia, um, a core component is really make, um, applying those FAIR principles. It's also facilitating, as I mentioned before, cross-border data and service sharing, and in doing so, enabling cross-border or inter-jurisdiction multifaceted outcomes. 
stakeholders can overcome geographic boundaries and collaborate effectively. And certainly we've seen a need for this on a whole range of different events over the last couple of years. It's really um, reinforced the need for us to be able to work across a whole range of different uh, boundaries, whether they're jurisdictional or whether they're organisational or whether they're patterns based. There's borders everywhere, but a need to work across those. Uh, so really integrated geospatial infrastructure, which Digital Arts Australia is, is connecting organisations across borders, jurisdictions and sectors to address shared challenges as efficiently and as effectively as we can. But it comes with challenges. Our stakeholders are across government, businesses and community, and they're at a range of different levels. We've got some seriously high end professionals at the cutting edge of a whole range of different technology technology. Um, whether that's individually or as an organisation or a department. And we also have a whole lot of people that have a need to make spatially enabled decisions, but don't necessarily have a skill set or access um, at the moment to be able to do those. Um, as the slide says there, we're looking for novice uh, to export. However, uh, as uh, some of my staff have pitched it, um, we're looking from punters to pros and, um, and enthusiastic amateurs uh, as well. And, and in particular, it's really those enthusiastic amateurs where Digital Arts Australia will be exceptional um, in, in improving outcomes. But I guess the essence of this slide is to really highlight that we have stakeholders across government, business and communities at a range of different um, skill set and ability to take on or not take on um, technology and, and training um, overheads. And the challenges are real, um, but also the payoff is massive. So in terms of uh, Digital Arts Australia and the concepts uh, sitting behind it, it needs to be integrated and holistic. And as you can see here, uh, we've got what's called uh, the 4P uh, uh, body of work, which covers off on platform, policy, partnerships and people. Importantly for uh, platforms, that is uh, certainly our focus of effort, where the platform is um, uh, the technology component covers off on both the hardware and software to enable integrated geospatial infrastructure. Uh, there is a, a um, it also includes the data um, that and services that feed the platform, noting that we're aiming for um, fair principles um, as part of that data and service sharing. From a policy perspective, well, I guess I should say that it's all well and good to be the focus of effort, but if you don't square away the other uh, three P's, then uh, the platform itself will not succeed. And that's why we're looking for an integrated and holistic approach um, to the de um, design and delivery of Digital Arts Australia. So in particular, uh, the policy piece here, making sure we've got collaborative uh, governance to make sure that we have uh, the most inefficient and effective way forward, things like really robust um, project and program governance. We are able to um, have robust data sharing agreements in place, a whole range of different mechanisms to make sure the, pl the platform is optimised to do um, uh, deliver best business. In terms of partnerships, critically important. Without engagement and collaboration, then integrated geospatial infrastructure does not work. It is all about um, partnerships and the associated collaboration. Um, but importantly, it needs to make sure we're capitalising off mutually beneficial outcomes. And really the crux of that is making sure that um, uh, that there is a benefit not only to Digital Arts Australia, but also for the producers or the users that are, are being part of it. Um, so for, as, a, as a great example, uh, producers are unlikely to take on a really high um, liability against uh, how to produce data or um, uh, how to do metadata, for example, if it doesn't already meet their organisational goals. Uh, and it, it's not a, a really big outcome uh, to their to their users, for example. And so in that instance, we have to find a sweet spot between our producers and our users and how Digital Arts Australia can support them. We've noted there it's cross-jurisdictional and, and you will continue to harp, hear me harp on a little bit, I, I guess, about the benefits of Digital Arts Australia really being able to cut across uh, borders, jurisdictions and patterns. The fourth P there is against people. 
and being able to build capacity amongst our stakeholders, both producers and users, develop skills, but without a significant skill uh, a training overhead and enable our workforce to do uh, do good work in the most efficient and effective way. Um, and I know certainly from where I'm sitting, if we can't provide uh, the tools to our staff, whether in government or industry in the community, uh, then they're disinclined to continue in, in that path and they'll be looking for different options. So as we move forward, Digital Arts Australia, uh, this slide really just gives you an overview of the platform uh, solution. It's, um, it's comprised of three information domains. So that's the source domain of Digital Arts Australia, um, which is an ArcGIS enterprise solution, a government information domain, which again is an ArcGIS enterprise solution, and a public information domain, which is a AGOL uh, solution. We have different licensing uh, levels, and we've got an example there of uh, creators and viewers and some of the different functionality um, that is available for both creators and uh, viewers. And on the left hand side of that platform solution slide, you'll see agency production systems. And that is uh, where a producer um, is able to provide ideally services which can be consumed directly into Digital Atlas uh, Australia. Uh, and if not, we'll be looking to uh, rehost the resource. But in the first instance, wherever possible, noting that we're looking to pull in over time an incredible amount of data, uh, looking to um, um, share that data rather than having to rehost it. In terms of the functionality sitting within the platform, it's as you'd expect to see. Um, anyone um, who's uh, a GIS professional would be fairly familiar uh, with the range of um, functionality that sits there. Um, some of these um, are in play right now. Some of them have the option to be uh, turned on and built out. but. As you'd expect, out of the box, uh, geospatial um, software tailored to support Digital Arts Australia and integrated geospatial infrastructure. I don't think there'll be any surprises there for anyone um, um, in the geospatial um, with a geospatial background. Uh, some of the cool functionality, which I would like to um, uh, point out, uh, I just want to talk a little bit about the collaboration piece. So functionality built into Digital Arts Australia is to really promote how we uh, do business in the most efficient and effective way and how we collaborate uh, within uh, groups. So um, being able to more effectively share work in progress uh, and also to be able to provide um, uh, work uh, across a group either it could be in your organisation, it could be across different government departments, it could be a collaborative group that include uh, researchers, part of industry, government, a whole range of different people, but you can share collaboratively and rather than having to uh, pull out different data sets or provide flattened products uh, and um, the various ways in which we operate right now, providing a really awesome opportunity to work more efficiently in groups in either um, a, a locked or unlocked um, capability and also the ability to share with our organisations or to publish to a whole range of stakeholders uh, once we've created a product. On the right hand side here, you'll see uh, this is just a snapshot of a couple of different initiatives and really what we're saying there is building on a whole heap of foundation data and capability uh, is initiatives and that's looking at um, different data and functionality that would be required to really um, unleash the power of Digital Arts Australia for a certain um, outcome or a certain uh, user group. Uh, so there's a whole heap of mechanisms we have in play to improve the collaborate, innovate and solve component of Digital Arts Australia. In terms of our uh, data conceptually, Digital Arts Australia is comprised of our uh, foundation data sets, which uh, are based off the ANSLEEC uh, Foundation Spatial Data Framework or FSDF as the majority of you will know it. So that's the orange line there, iteratively building out uh, our foundation data holdings and the blue lines there are really um, the additional data sets for initiatives. Um, so uh, particular data sets that will improve outcomes for a defined uh, user group. So conceptually, that's what our uh, data uh, looks like. And I'll talk a little bit more about where we're at um, in terms of data holdings in a moment. So in terms of our journey, as many of you know, Digital Atlas um, of Australia was introduced in May 2021 as part of the governance digital economy strategy, a key investment in the 21-22 budget. 
The strategy aims to position Australia as a world leading digital economy and society by 2030, in part by unlocking the value of data and in Digital Arts Australia's um, instance, unlocking the value of spatial data. Geoscience Australia is delivering the Digital Arts Australia, one of a suite of digital and data investments across government to harness the power of location based data. This investment recognises the importance of location data in dri driving improved place-based policy, planning, investments and decision-making across all sectors and levels of government. From a Geoscience Australia perspective, it is uh, part of the location program, which is comprised of three interconnected projects. So those projects, uh, many of you um, who've dialed in from Geoscience Australia will be um, across this from the place. Uh, I, I guess from the uh, space division and also um, uh, community safety um, as well. Um, but uh, I guess what, what I'm saying here is location program and you have the Australian Climate Service uh, project and that is really the Geoscience Australia components of the Australian Climate Service body of work. We have Digital Arts Australia and we also have the Defence Mapping Agreement as well, which is looking at providing a whole range of outcomes to defence, including uh, providing a whole heap of foundation data in a military specific uh, standard. They are all interlinked projects and the location program is aiming to programmatic to deliver these three to make sure uh, that we are doing it as efficiently as possible. Um, and as, as you you are probably in the same situation that we are. Uh, limited resources, making sure we're using the resources that we have uh, for the best bang for buck. Um, so I guess um, programmatic approach against all three. In terms of the schedule for Digital Arts Australia, I mentioned before it was announced in 2021. Uh, that project started its um, establishment component at the back end of 2021, and it's really flowed into 2021. Uh, correction 2022. We've now moved into the implementation uh, phase. It is a four year project that run a delivery phase that runs out to 2025 and then it has a 10 year sustainment line that sits out the back end, which is a fairly modest uh, sustainment line. So where we're at right now is in December 2022, uh, Digital Atlas Source, so that first of the information uh, domains was released for an internal beta release. In 2023, very recently, we had the limited external beta release. So a, a couple of stakeholders across federal government were included in that limited external beta release. Um, so that uh, information de domain has been released uh, for government. And we are currently on track uh, to deliver the public information domain of Digital Arts Australia in June of this year, noting that this constitutes initial operating capability. That's the minimal viable product of what Digital Arts Australia is with two years to iteratively improve both data holdings and functionality out to FOC or final operating capability of June of 2025. Um, so just, I guess, a couple of key points. Public release June 2023, minimum viable product, two years to build out functionality and data holdings against both foundation data and uh, initiatives out to 25 when it will transition into a BAU or sustainment uh, line at that point in time. We've got a whole heap of data sitting in there right now and a whole more to come. Uh, so data is available um, in the government environment right now. Uh, and you'll see here, uh, as noted up the top right hand side, the majority of our data is shared uh, and you've got a little uh, rehost icon for the data that is at the moment uh, rehosted. This is what our data looks like now um, and what's coming in uh, the next four to eight weeks. And we have a more detailed uh, data plan inclusive of um, with a real focus on the foundation data in the first instance and building out those initiatives uh, with follow on and concurrent um, activity. So this is what our data holdings um, look like at the moment. Uh, and I'm just going to click through to the next one to look at uh, some of the we've been working with the Australian Bureau of Statistics as a key partner of the Digital Arts Australia uh, in making socioeconomic data and census data more readily available. And the ABS has done some extraordinary work in providing a whole heap of web services available through Digital Arts Australia. So the ABS are delivering priority data via web services that will uh, that will be available to the Digital Atlas 
These services will enable non-expert and expert users alike to explore, analyse and visualise ABS statistical data quickly and far more easily than they've been able to do in the past. And we've got a lot of ex excited stakeholders um, looking to be able to capitalise um, off these um, services available through Digital Atlas Australia. Users will be able to combine Australian, or ABS data with other trusted national data sets to help with decision making or to consume and integrate uh, this data with their own systems. And these services will be made available through the ABS deployment of their own uh, ArcGIS enterprise development, which is um, under construction at the moment. And this development will enable the web services to not only connect effectively and, and the most efficiently with Digital Atlas Australia, but connect in a way that enables greater functionality uh, for stakeholders, not just at federal government, but um, all across Australia. So the 43 of those web services are already available for government units, and the ABS um, is doing a whole lot of work to make uh, many more available in the coming future. So big shout out to ABS. Thank you. Uh, a couple of other data sets uh, which are uh, about to be available um, in the very near future. Uh, so the National Roads data set, and really that's looking to improve access to up-to-date and trusted national road data. It has been procured by Geoscience Australia as part of the location program and supplied by Geoscape Australia and created using data from across all levels of uh, government. Importantly, that this data is CCBY, and if you are not familiar with this, it's uh, one of the most open licenses and it allows you as a user to use it in almost any way that you want. It's taken quite a lot of negotiation to get it to this point and a real exemplar um, of being able to provide foundation data uh, to a whole gamut of stakeholders um, in the most effective way possible. In addition there, uh, you can also see historic bushfires, uh, looking to be able to um, bring in um, uh, historic bushfire information, which shows location, extent and known data of fires that have occurred in Australia from the early 1900s through to 2021. It's the first national data set for fire history that extends beyond state and territory boundaries and funded by the Australian Research Data uh, Commons or ARDC as uh, many of us know it. Joint collaboration between Geoscience Australia and the Emergency Management Spatial Information Network Australia or MCA, and also the national state and territory governments. And it's a really great example of working with uh, a spatial producer to improving access, functionality, collaboration, and ultimately use of their product to a far wider, wider group of diverse stakeholders, because they will then, as users can then fuse this data set with a whole range of other uh, data types sitting um, and services sitting within Digital Arts Australia. So as an example, I could pull up boundary information, vegetation information, water bodies, like, a whole heap of different things that if I want to be able to create a, a certain type of product um, that you may not have functionality um, in, in reaching or, or pulling down that data set in the first instance. Uh, I talked a little bit before about limited external uh, release. Um, so as you can see there, uh, Digital Atlas for Government released to select users on the 31st of March 2023. Uh, you'll see uh, on the right hand side there who we've got uh, on board eight agencies there from across uh, government. And, and really that was about testing uh, both just with a couple of users. Hey, if you're a producer, what are some of those connections looks like? How do we optimize that? And as a, a user, what does some of that look like? And we've got a, a next rollout of that scheduled for May. For the 96 users that we onboarded, I think what, two and a half weeks ago, maybe it was three weeks ago, um, we've got 51 active users, which is reasonable considering we went straight into Easter and, and school holidays. Uh, and certainly um, our initial feedback is um, uh, really positive, but looking to build on uh, the feedback of uh, both our users and producers and that uh, and iteratively uh, build out that release of uh, the limited government release um, over coming months in a series of stages. All right. In terms of uh, a demonstration, I've got a couple um, of very quick uh, and very small demonstrations to give you a taste of Digital Arts Australia. One is looking at a GIS professional who is most likely to have their own high-end software. Um, it could be ArcGIS Pro, it could be a range of different software that enables a high-end um, uh, user to be and, and able to connect into Digital Arts Australia and do their work more efficiently and effectively. The second example is looking at a quick look at a non-GIS uh, professional example. 
So in this example, uh, as a GIS professional, the scenario, and it could be anything, but we've just chosen something, um, is a data analyst with spatial experience. The second example is looking at a quick look at a non-GIS uh, professional example. So in this example, uh, as a GIS professional, the scenario, and it could be anything, but we've just chosen something, um, is a data analyst with spatial experience is requested to support policy officers tasked with developing a new policy for electric vehicles. Traditionally, target demographics for electronic vehicles sales are high, uh, sorry, are for high income households with millennials. However, this government wants to develop an elect vehicle subsidy or incentive scheme to target those who may not fit this demographic in order to reach a broader uptake of electric, electric vehicles in Australia. I'll just reiterate, this is a scenario, this is not a, um, a live example. Uh, the policy team needs to specifically know who should be consulted in developing this policy, where are the hotspots where this policy is applicable, and where should a consultation be run for best bang for buck. The desired outcome uh, here is a well-designed and informed consultation process with targeted engagement to uh, capture more relevant input and reduce the cost and time taken to develop the policy. And we want to do this again, and I, I do note that I say this a lot, efficiently and effectively. How do we do this um, with the least amount of pain for the GIS professional and uh, the policy um, creator? So let's take a, a quick look at how GR, a GIS professional would use Digital Arts Australia to create a product to inform this body of work. Um, so what you can see here is an ArcGIS Pro uh, desktop tool, uh, and, it's, it's, and it is probably the most efficient way to plug into DAA, but certainly not the only way as a desktop tool. Um, you'll see here um, that an individual user um, can look at, uh, connect with Digital Arts Australia seamlessly and tap into the data and contact that is within the system. And for this scenario, they're using ABS data, a quick search for the data, and they're able to pull that across into, um, into their own um, uh, ArcGIS Pro. Importantly, they don't have to go to 18 different websites if they know where to find them. They don't need to clip and ship. They don't need to air gap from five different government departments. What they can really quickly and easily mesh with Digital Art Australia to optimise what they already have. And I guess that's one of the key, uh, key differences um, for Digital Arts Australia. Um, continuing on with this example, drilling down and visualising data. Uh, from here, our user here has um, identified the information that they really want to hone in on and work with their policy officer to define that. In this example, we're looking at motor vehicle ownership and household income and going to take those layers and identify criteria and change how they are visualised and call out areas of, in this instance, of lower motor vehicle ownership and higher uh, household income. So just pulling that information uh, up now. And then what we're uh, looking is uh, doing a little bit of bivariate analysis and being able to pull out in this instance, the dark blue areas um, are of particular interest uh, to the people um, developing the policy and therefore the GIS professional. And they're going to go ahead and filter out data further to only show the areas of low vehicle ownership and high income. So working hand in glove to be able to identify where this policy needs to be focused. And as we take it further, we want to re symbolize re data to call out the highs of the highs and the lows of the lows based on the criteria that we have set. So in this example here, just zooming in on a couple of areas of high importance that are worthy of further analysis, so we can take those data sets and export into a new layer to use how we need to. We're then able to use that layer uh, with some data that we've ex extracted or we've had on our uh, um, own drive to show current EV charging locations. This is a great example of fusing data readily available through Digital Arts Australia with our own data sets. And now we can see the distribution of EV charging locations mixed with those high value areas. And once we're happy with the analysis and how it's displaying, this product can be pushed back into Digital Arts Australia if that's what we choose to do, if that meets our needs. So in terms of publishing, um, as I mentioned here, it can be uh, shared in Digital Atlas for government with closed user groups, or it can be published to all users across government and the public domains if, if that meets our needs. And then it becomes a click ready on demand map with all the data preloaded, analyzed and visualized at your, at your fingertips. 
And I guess as I reflect, it's really about that seamless connection to high-end desktop tools to rapidly find and fuse trusted data into a product. And this uh, and to work collaboratively um, and really easily with others. We right now we try and work collaboratively, but we're so constrained with how we do uh, business or the the uh, tools available, the connections we have. And Digital Arts Australia is really aiming to be able to pr promote and improve that collaboration. And in this instance, allows GIS professionals to do a more uh, to do their job far more easily, uh, so they can really focus on the analysis rather than finding data and pulling it in and waiting for people to get back to them. When you combine the Digital Arts Australia enabling, um, when you combine these, um, uh, I guess, key outcomes with Digital Arts Australia also enabling non-professionals a great ability to self-help, all of a sudden you can start to see some really massive wins. And I guess I'm just going to talk really briefly about uh, an entry level uh, demonstration where the focus is really on click ready on demand uh, maps and apps designed to meet a variety of user needs and preferences and, and to really enable some self help. We've got one example here and, and we've got one example uh, of, an, uh, of a map uh, preloaded, which we'll show today. But really think about um, maps and apps being able to better enable patterns of practice, and it could be across regional planning or foundation data initiatives or whole of government collaboration, multi-level collaboration, um, sustainable development goals. Look, there's a whole range of different scenarios which in time uh, you will see a whole heap of maps and apps to enable low end users to be able to access preloaded uh, maps and apps um, to better enable what they do and it also in doing so enables our GIS professionals to do that high-end level uh, analysis. So in this demonstration uh, the scenario is a department um, officer looking to develop a brief report to help inform potential power infrastructure uh, development. Um, so you can very quickly go to the Digital Arts of Australia. Uh, you can explore by theme um, and you'll scroll down here. So there's, uh, we don't have all the FSDF data themes there in there at the moment, that, but that is in the process of being uh, built out. And then you can move uh, to, in this instance, a Powering Australia uh, maps, uh, infrastructure planning map that has information preloaded in it. As I said, it's just one example. We haven't got other maps and apps loaded up onto the Digital Apps Australia site, but that is uh, certainly planned for the very near uh, future and will continue to build out over the next uh, almost two and a half years. Um, so in this instance, that Powering Australia uh, map has got a whole heap of information already uh, pre-configured data um, already provided and we can zoom into a location of interest. This is a particularly interesting uh, location if you're into the Hunter Valley wine region, as I'm sure many of you um, are aware. I can also uh, add data if I want to. Um, I can add data uh, from my own home drive. I can add a URL, but I can seamlessly mesh information from Digital Arts Australia and a particular thing that I may be interested in that's that's um, that's I've either got or I'm pulling down from another site. Um, I'm also um, sorry there's my example of being able to uh, add data got ahead of myself there. Uh, the key point is that we're never going to have absolutely everything that you possibly want. We can provide a one stop shop for the majority um, of your, your national data in particular, but there is most likely going to be additional layers that you may um, have from your organisation or from a, a certain um, area of interest that you may want to add um, to Digital Arts Australia to make sure you are most enabled to make um, informed decision making. And Digital Arts Australia absolutely allows that. Uh, importantly, we're also able to be able to uh, uh, deliver the outputs of those in a range of different ways here. This is just a print on demand uh, capability. So in this instance, printing to PDF um, so that we can then use it in multiple ways or we can embed, embed that map um, into our policy document. However we want to use it, um, then that's already preloaded. So you as a user don't have to work out hmm, how do I uh, how do I print something that is then usable that I can embed um, electronically or even hard copy if that's what's required. I need to brief um, my senior officer later on today and I want to take in uh, a briefing pack. How do I, I print that in hard copy or how do I embed that uh, into a policy document? Then those uh, actions are already preloaded. So it is a push button friendly uh, interface. 
So look, before I close out, I just wanted to, I guess, um, talk about a couple of key points uh, for Digital Arts Australia uh, before we open up uh, for some questions. So I guess the first point there is we're in an evolving, um, an evolving landscape. Uh, policies change, funding lines morph, uh, technology continues to develop it um, in some way alarming and otherwise exciting rate. Uh, look, a key example is, uh, for example, in a federal space, the development of the digital data government strategy and implementation plan and Digital Arts Australia being a key part of that um, um, implementation plan as it continues to build out into uh, the, the new financial year. That's an example of uh, working to collaboratively to make sure that we are relevant and meaningful in this instance, delivering digital and data. Uh, uplift um, as part of the digital and data government strategy, but it's one example of many. The landscape continues to evolve. The thing that remains the same is the need to maximise the potential of location-based information to um, enable informed decision making. That is the constant, how we do it, and, and the bits around the pieces will continue to change, but I guess um, the key outcome remains the same. Uh, in terms of new data and services, uh, increasing data we're increasingly um, building out the spatial component of data or spatially enabling data. And there's a number of producers that are look, looking to uplift how they make uh, that data um, available, in particular looking to merge into providing services. And the Australian Bureau of Statistics in particular is really um, uh, doing some leading work in this space. Uh, but I know there's a whole range of different um, powerhouses out there, not just at federal government, but across many areas of government. Uh, we have a number of states and territories in particular really looking to push their digital twins and uh, a whole heap of other interfaces and provide a whole heap of um, services. So there will be continued challenges about how we um, leverage and off and consume um, or, or rehost uh, information that is available to meet the needs of Digital Arts Australia and, and its stakeholders. So we'll need to continue to evolve to keep pace with the growing data and services that becomes available. And it is tricky ground, um, but hugely exciting as well. In terms of iterate and improve, Digital Atlas Australia in itself, I believe, is evolutionary in bringing integrated geospatial infrastructure, infrastructure to federal government in particular. However, it will also need to continue to evolve to meet the growing change of both the producer and user landscape. Um, right now, we know that we've got the public facing Digital Arts Australia beta will be available from the 30th of June and there'll be a whole heap um, uh, of evolving as we look to improve the functionality and data holdings out for the following um, two years. So it's not a stagnant um, process, um, really need to um, uh, continue um, the evolution there. Um, and the final point there was about realising spatial uh, potential. We've talked about everything happens somewhere in both time and space, but a lot of our data is not spatially enabled. And then if it is, often it's not, um, it, it's difficult um, to find and, and reuse and a whole heap of different things. Digital Arts Australia is really in, the, in a position to spearhead the next generation of spatial data at, at a national level, especially federal government, but to do so will require both internal GA and other federal agency spatial uplift. And ideally, um, as we continue down this process, hand in glove with a whole range of stakeholders, we're looking for, um, for you, sorry, producers to come with their data and an understanding of what you would like to do with your stakeholders, what their needs are and what your needs are, and we'll help you to fuse it to make it available, more readily available and consumable, and fuse it with a whole heap of information, um, uh, data and services sitting in Digital Arts Australia to make sure that you are getting uh, the widest use of, of your data. I honestly believe that Digital Arts Australia is a game changer if we as a community uh, want it to be.